Good evening. It's a good Friday. Um, I invite you to settle in right where you are. Uh, maybe lean into the pillow. Uh, we're just going to have a, a friendly discussion here tonight. Uh, let me introduce you to everybody. This is Billy Garza, Pastor Billy Garza. He's one of our elders here at River Church. He's been here since we started. His wife, Elise Garza, is mother of two and expecting a third. And she's on staff here at River Church. This is my precious wife, Lydia, Lydia Caulfield. And uh, you know her probably. And I'm Pastor Randy, Pastor Randy Caulfield. I'm the lead pastor here at River Church. Uh, so tonight, uh, because it's Good Friday, we wanted to really have a friendly discussion and invite you in. Uh, so this is maybe the last time I'm going to talk to the camera until the very end, because we're just going to talk a uh, little, little, little family or, or friendly discussion regarding a really, really big issue. Uh, and that is the issue. Why did Jesus have to die? Why did Jesus have to go to the cross? What's up with the, the, the blood of the Bible? We, if we remove that and we don't talk about that very much, then I think that the story of the Bible and the story of, of Jesus becomes uh, really superficial or, uh, or, or, or it doesn't make sense. Uh, or it looks like maybe Jesus came to the earth and he, he failed. Uh, but there's, there's, a, there's a, something that brings the whole story together and keeps it, keeps it together. And that is this purposeful or the purpose of the cross. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And we got five, five reasons why Jesus had to die. And we're going to talk about those. Hi, friends. Hi. Hey, Randy. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing well. Doing well. Busy, busy, busy Holy Week. Right. Uh, getting ready for everything, uh, including tonight. I mean, it's already busy, and then you have to do it all online. So online. That's, that's... Yeah, that's been, that has been, uh, for a guy who's been doing church now for, uh, 30 years, uh, you know, as a, as a minister of the gospel, um, to not have to take everything online is it's just like trying to teach an old dog <laughs> a new trick. You know? uh, but thankfully, we've got I've had really really good help, and uh, and thankfully, uh, I think it's it's opening up for us as a church and churches all over the globe new opportunities, ways that we can touch people's lives, um, in which we didn't even consider in the past. So that's been good. That's been good. So anyway, why did Jesus have to die? That's what we're talking about tonight. I want to hear from you guys. Um, we've got the, the five reasons. The first one that we're going to look at is this. Jesus had to die to satisfy the wrath of God. That sounds so ominous, almost scary, you know. Um, the wrath of God. Is God really angry? And, and why? He is angry because all of mankind is sinful. And sin is things that we just do that displease him. And so um, he, he, he's angry about that. There's Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned. So there's, there aren't any of us that are exempt from that. All have sinned and fall short of his glory. And so God is a righteous, holy, perfect God. And so he, he's angry when we do things that displease him. So I've, I'm a, I'm a dad and I've been an angry dad sometimes, but it wasn't very righteous. And I've known other dads and moms who get, get, get mad sometimes and they, but it's not, it's not pretty. You know, it's not, it's not righteous. Yeah. So I think like some of my friends that, that aren't Christ followers, they really struggle with the idea that God, that God, we say he's holy and we say, He's loving, and, but then there's this picture in the Bible of him, of him being angry. How, how do we help our friends wrestle through what maybe seems like a tension? Yeah, yeah there are a couple ideas that come to mind. One is that from, from the beginning in Genesis, like that wasn't a part of his original design for mankind and for the world. Um, Everything he created was perfect and good and righteous and holy and sweet. And then it all just messed up. Adam and Eve messed it all up. And so there's this brokenness. And I think that in that sense, his anger is justified in seeing, you know, something that was so beautiful and created by him and for him just shattered and, and um, made you, a mess. Do you want to use the... Uh... The coloring reference that you talked about earlier yeah um when i see william working really hard on a, on a on a page that we 
have for him, a coloring book, and he gets out of the lines, all of a sudden, that means the world to him now. He, he used to just scribble all over, <laughs> wouldn't really care, but all of a sudden, he, he'll come to me, his lips trembling, and, you know, saddened and, and frustrated and upset over his mistake. And uh, so, when you, when you view, um, yeah, God's wrath in light of just that wasn't his original design for, for the world for us. And yeah. Something that I've said to you all in the past when we, just, when we have, the four of us have discussed wrath, I've said that, that um, the picture I have is like a dad who is looking through the kitchen window out into the street and sees some abuse or some someone being taken advantage of and there is there is a, a righteous anger that dad has mm -hmm. right like he wants to go out there and, and right the wrong mm -hmm. to address the injustice yeah. and and if he didn't feel that way he wouldn't be a righteous dad um, if he was just passive or if he just went back to the to the, to the back room and just ignored it uh, and so it's that kind of anger that we're talking about. We're not talking about an anger, I don't think, that like I didn't get my way, which is what I usually get angry yeah. about. Like yeah. people are bugging me and I'm not getting my way and so I'm angry about it. But it's God's righteous is, uh, I'm sorry, God's anger is righteous because he, he, he can be angry but still be holy yeah. because he's, he's angry in the right way. Yeah. I, I, I like to think of it with my kids like, like son, don't don't do this thing, because you're you're gonna get hurt. It's gonna be worse for you if you do this. Mm -hmm. And so, man, um, just being able to speak to my kids and want to protect them and know that their best life um, is to listen to my instruction. Like son, I, I love you. I got your back. Like I want nothing but the best. For you, I want the best for William. I want the best for Matthew. And so, when I instruct them to do things, um, not always, but uh, usually it's with their best. Unless I'm just being lazy, like I don't want to get up and throw something away. But, uh, <laughs> but, but more often than not, it's because like, son, don't do this because like I love you and I want I don't want you to be hurt and I want you to be have have a good life, if you will, or I, I want you to be in uh, this protection, this cover, like. Your life will be good if you listen to me. And so, you know. We use this word. It's a biblical word. We use this word all the time. Um, saved. We say, Jesus, Jesus saved me. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the, the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. right. I've been saved. Are you saved? I'm saved. Right? Mm -hmm. We throw that around. It's like Christian lingo. Mm -hmm. And people that don't, that aren't familiar with the church, it kind of freaks them out. <laughs> Uh, because they think through these things and maybe we say, but we don't like, we, we, we just assume that we're all kind of talking the same language. But, but, but to say that Jesus saves implies that he, he, he saves us from something. More than implies it. it that, is, that is definitely the, the, what that means. And so, so I think it's good for us to wrestle with, okay, what does Jesus save us from? The consequences of sin. The consequences of sin. Yeah. Which leads us right back to God's wrath. What we just started, yeah. God's wrath, yeah. So, so that's where I want to major tonight. Not on yeah. like we all deserve God's wrath, but according to the Bible, we do. We do yeah. The holiness of God says that we deserve His His, his wrath. Um, you said the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. and that's talking about eternal death. That's talking about separation from God. So, a biblical principle: if you're gonna if you're gonna believe the Bible, then you have to. Uh, and you have to uh, submit to the truth that, that, that the wages, the, the just due for our sin is death. That's, that's the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. But what I want to really now quickly move toward is, but what did Jesus do about that? And the, the word that we're using tonight is Jesus satisfied the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Well, he lived a, a sinless life, Jesus here on the earth, he, he lived a perfect life. And so when he died on the cross, it wasn't like all the other people that had died on crosses before him. 
It was it was a, a death that satisfied the wrath of God because of his perfect record. I think if you look at Old Testament, um, the, the sacrificial system in the Old Testament, um, people had to present their best, like it's perfect, your, your perfect sheep or your perfect bull or whatever it was. It had to be the, the best one, not the not the one that was in the back of the barn, but like the one that you invite people over to see, the like fat that, one. the fat one. Yes. Um, yeah, and without so without spot or blemish, without or... spot or blemish, and so this and, would have been this would have been a lamb that could have been shown at an FFA event, <laughs> not not the sure. not the not the three legged skinny things that you drag to the the market and it dies right there on the scale, but but the the pretty plump. The thoroughbred, the, the, the pet, the one that you show in an FFA event. And we know about that because our kids yeah. show it at FFA. Okay, yeah. go ahead. I don't know anything about yeah. that. I never did that. But yeah, yeah. Um, and so it had to be that one. And and as you said earlier, like everybody's sin, like we are all stained. We are all the sheep that is dead on arrival. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and Jesus, Jesus is not. And so um, he is the only one who is able to to yeah. fulfill that requirement. Romans people. 5, Romans 5 says this, <clears throat> we have been justified by Jesus' blood. Much more, we have been saved by him. Here's the answer to our question. From the wrath of God. That's what Jesus saves us from, according to Romans 5. From the wrath of God. Galatians 3 says that he uh, redeemed us from a curse by becoming for us the curse. So like we were cursed, but he he wiped that away because he became the curse instead. Um, and then and then uh, one last verse, John, or first John four says that God, uh, God loved us to the extent that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be, here's a big old school theological term, to be the propitiation for our sins. God loved, loved us to the, to the degree that he sent Jesus to be the propitiation for our sins. I want to use that word, even though I don't normally use it, because um, it's an important word. There's not, a, there's not really another word to replace it, but let me, let me explain what propitiation is. Propitiation is this, the sacrifice that Jesus makes that, that turns the heart and the attitude of God. It, it, it shifts the, the, the heart and the attitude of God. So, so God's wrath, his, his punishment, his anger uh, towards uh, regarding sin is, is squarely pointed at, at humanity. All of sinful humanity and God's wrath and anger is righteous anger. It's all squarely pointed at us. But then Jesus comes along. He dies this sinner's death. He absorbs all that wrath. See, we can't. I could spend eternity in hell, and I could never, because I'm not the perfect sacrifice, I could never absorb all of God's wrath. But Jesus comes along, dies this sinner's death, even though he was, he was sinless, and he absorbs all that wrath. And then what does he say at the end? He says, it is finished. You've heard that. That's, that's a famous, famous uh, uh, saying that Jesus made on the cross. It is finished, meaning it's, it's all paid for. It's all absorbed. And so propitiation means that Jesus comes along, he diverts God's anger, and now, now what, we, what, what, what God uh, points toward us is, is now favor. In place of the wrath, now he shows us his favor. He, he, is, he is for us. He is, he is our cheering for us. He is, he is showing us his favor. So, so God's wrath is replaced with God's favor. That's propitiation. That's what Jesus did. And so now we can be called children of God. Amen. Because Christ died for our sins. Now we are adopted into his family because Christ died for our sins. Now we're back in that original design of he wants relationship with us. That's what that's why he created us. That's why he sent his son to die was for that original design of I want my people with me. These mm -hmm. these are my these this this is who I created. I want them to live with me for eternity. And so now we are sons and daughters of God because of what Jesus did for us. Yes. And all that is motivated by love, love from the Father. 
through his son. There's this beautiful metaphor or symbol in scripture. And it goes like this, that, 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 that existing with God for eternity, it's like this table, like God has this table. And he, he invites us. We, we used to be strangers and foreigners and, and we were running from God. But because of what Jesus did on the cross, he invites us now like this. He invites us to the table, like there's a seat at the table of God for Billy and Elise and Lydia and Randy for eternity. We get to, we get to pull up to the table and say, I'm here, I'm a part of the family, I'm, I'm welcome at the table. That's what Jesus did. He satisfied God's wrath so that we could be then invited back in to the picture, to the party, to the table. There's a second uh, answer to this question. Why did Jesus have to die? Why the cross? And uh, I, I really like this one. The next answer is out of obedience to the Father. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, uh, so I, I, love, I love Genesis, the first three chapters in Genesis. Genesis. But you see in Genesis chapter 3 when... Uh, Adam and Eve sin, um, God is telling Adam, like, okay, things were like this. Now, they're, like, here's the the, the, uh, the punishment or the, this is how things are going to be now. The new the reality. Right, the new reality. And so <clears throat> you see that he, he tells Adam, he tells Eve, and then he talks to the serpent. And uh, with, he talks to them and says, there's going to be uh, this 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 enmity, this this struggle, this battle. Strife. Be, yeah, the strife between you and uh and and Eve's offspring, and, and and essentially what he's saying at that moment is there's there's going to be this 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 offspring to come that is going to crush the serpent, crush Satan. So you see that you see that in Genesis three, the first sin when we become unrighteous, when we become separated. Are you saying that <clears throat> that however many thousands of years ago that was, that that when all, when all that went down and when humanity uh, turned away from God and God turned away from humanity when, when Adam and Eve sinned. Are you saying that at that moment God already had a plan for our salvation? Absolutely, yeah. Because um, that was one of the questions I used to have. Like, okay, well, what about what about everybody in the Old Testament who there was no Jesus? Like, do they have to believe in Jesus to, to be, like, how do they get into heaven, you know? And so... Um, but it's all like it's been the plan. Like Jesus is the plan, and so you see, and that was in Genesis three. You see in Isaiah fifty three, uh, uh, Isaiah is talking about this 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 coming uh, this sacrifice, this 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 sheep that's being led to the slaughter, and he's he's going to take away this. Uh, he was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Like that's Jesus. That's Old Testament. That's before Jesus is even born, and then so there's this lamb, uh, this sacrifice that we, we've been talking about earlier. And then, and then you see in John in the New Testament, John the Baptist, who prepares the, he, he comes before Jesus and he prepares the way for Jesus. And the first time he sees Jesus, he says, "Look, there, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world." Like that's that's the guy. Um, and you so, can show that thing at FFA. Yeah, that's the <laughs> one. Like everybody, come look at my my, my Lamb because this is it. Um, yeah. So we're talking about obedience to the Father. That yeah. that's one of, one of the. <clears throat> One of the reasons Jesus had to die was out of obedience to the Father. We know from, I mean, you've, you've referenced several scriptures. Uh, Ephesians 1, it says that it was always God's plan to, to save us through this, this sacrifice of his son. Uh, I, Isaiah uh, says that it was, it was always, get this, always the will of the Father to crush the son. Mm. And that's brutal, but, but that just shows how much... Uh, how, how, how significant it was that, that, that God wanted to save us, wanted to reconcile us, that, that the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they, they made this, this plan. And so what we have in the, in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, constantly Jesus is saying, I, I'm, I'm here to, out of obedience to the Father. In fact, he says, he says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. Imagine if our kids said that, Lydia, like, and I'm just, my, what, what really what really feeds my soul is obeying my dad. Like, <laughs> do what my mom says. That would be God, for sure. <laughs> I love how hard we're laughing at that like, possibility because it's just so un, unlike 
yes. our world. Yes. <laughs> like, how, right. Yeah. Right. So I'm 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 just intrigued by here's what I'm in. I'm intrigued by the fact that, that God the Son can can submit to the will of the Father and yet still be completely God. He can say, I'm just here to, to, to do the will of the Father. I'm I'm here to my food, what really feeds my soul is to obey my heavenly father. And 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 yet, and yet, we're compelled to believe from the whole of scripture that from the whole of scripture that Jesus wasn't like Robin and God was Batman. Jesus wasn't like junior guys, fully God, and yet voluntarily he submits to the will of the Father. We struggle as human beings. Maybe you can maybe you can talk about this, but we struggle as human beings. We think if I if I'm called to submit to somebody, that makes them important and makes me less than insignificant. There's a very pic- very different picture of what submission looks like within the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I mean, I just think of, of the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Like, they're all God. Like, they're 100% God. Um, they just, as, as, as you alluded to, they all have, like, a very specific and unique role and a unique purpose and... and um, I was reading something today, but it des- it described it as uh, we're called to what we're called to for the glory of God through the work of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so, um, like that, like that. That's this this this. And the cool thing about that, though, is Jesus then not necess- submitting to the will of the Father, not as a lesser than, but and then this this beautiful trust and this beautiful like, and this this is like. God is good. Mm-hmm. I heard. Uh, <clears throat> I heard Russell William uh, Russell Wilson uh, and his wife. What's his wife? Uh, Ciara. Ciara. Um, yeah. <laughs> Russ, Russell Wilson and his wife were on on uh, uh, Jimmy Fallon's show a few nights ago, and and Russell Wilson told the story. He said, "My dad, growing up, uh, in fact, he's told this story before. My, my dad, growing up, all the time." Every day, he would ask me, son, why not you? Why not you, son? Why not you? You know, and that, and that really propelled him to greatness. He now has like a foundation called Why Not You? And so he always knew that like my dad's calling me to something bigger. You know? that, that's Jesus. You know, mm-hmm. From the beginning of time, uh, God the Son knew God the Father is calling me to this great, big rescue mission. Mm-hmm. One day it's going to happen, and then and, it, and here it is. Now it's happened, and now he looks. Now he looks to it in the past, uh, although he sees everything. We see things in a in a time sort of fashion, but 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 Jesus, he knew that God the Father has this rescue mission, and, and uh, I want to do that. I want to I want to be that. The the third the third reason to answer this question tonight: uh, Why did Jesus have to die? Why the cross? The third reason is really significant kind of alluded to it, but, but it, the answer is for the forgiveness of our sins. For the forgiveness of our sins. Man, I tell you what, if there's one thing that marks our world right now, uh, marks humanity, it's guilt. Mm-hmm. A lot of people feel a lot of guilt. I'm not, I don't mean they are guilty, although I guess we are, yeah. but I'm just saying we feel guilty. Like, so in my own things that I did in the past that I I wish I wouldn't have done, but I can't change it. Things in my in my past that I wish I would have done that I didn't do, but I can't go back and change that either. Things that I'm currently doing. <laughs> yeah. That I can, yeah. Today, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I love the reality that um, that we are new creations in Christ, mm. and that um, the old in God's eye, the old is past, and the new has come. And, and he wants us to walk in that reality. Mm-hmm. And, and yes, we do have sin in our lives. We're, we're humans. And, and, and so, um, but God is calling us to live as new creations in him. And, and he has enabled us. He has enabled us through his Holy Spirit who indwells us mm-hmm. as, as his children. And, and so God really is calling us to live whole and pure lives through the power of his spirit. As Christians, I'm not talking about like everybody in like all of humanity, but like those of us that say we're following Christ, that, that, that the blood of Jesus has forgiven us. 
Do you think that as Christians sometimes we're harder on ourselves than God is on us? Well, he says that our sins are as far as the east is from the west, that he doesn't even remember them. That's mm -hmm. what he says in his word. To infinity, infinity and beyond. Right. And and we we remind ourselves, don't we? And that's where the word guilt comes in. We we remind ourselves of what we have done and how we do fall short. And and I really think that that is the devil. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think he he wants to discourage us and he wants to keep us down, and he wants us to be silenced. Mm. And when we're feeling guilt and we're feeling condemned, um, we're quiet mm. and we want to hide. And yeah. I think that's a really, that can be a very difficult concept for people to, um, to believe and then embrace that, uh, that God does forgive mm -hmm. because so many people have not been shown forgiveness mm -hmm. their entire life, right? Mm -hmm. They've not been shown grace. Maybe, you know, parents or, or family members just continuously, um, you know, hold their sins and, and like dangle them in front of them every single day mm -hmm. and remind them and guilt trip them. And so people don't know different. They don't know what that looks like. And so in their minds, and it's, and it's wholly the truth. They, they, they believe it, that it's fact that they cannot be forgiven mm -hmm. or that they have done so wrong too. They've gone too far. There's just no way. And it's just so untrue. And it's just, it's not what the Bible teaches us. It's not what the Lord showed us in scripture through Jesus. And it's, it's just quite the opposite. And like, my prayer is that people would hear that, you know, where, wherever they are in their life and that they would, they would just, that the Lord and his spirit and his goodness and his grace would start to unravel that lie that mm. we've been believing that we can't be saved or that we cannot be forgiven. It's just not true. Billy, you, uh, you used to be known as Billy the Kid. I guess you still are. You're a quarterback reporter, one of, the, one of the greatest quarterbacks that came out of the Rio Grande Valley and played college ball. Uh, so, so you, you, you know, when you think about like how people remember me from the past, it's probably positive. But you know what? A lot of people, a lot of people, they've moved out of state or moved out of their city and moved to a different state because they don't want to be remembered the way that their hometown remembers them. Yeah. You know. But, but the truth of the gospel is that you're not who you 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 were. You're not who you. We're not who we were. Uh, we're, we're, we're not defined by, by our past. We're not defined by how our high school buddies remember us. We're not defined by the, the most vile things that we've done. That Romans 8 says that in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation. Yeah. We're not condemned. We're not condemned any longer. But here's, as, as pastors, here's something that, that uh, maybe may is somewhat unique uh, to being a pastor. People come in, and they got a past, they got a history, they got a background. You know, mm -hmm. are there people that we don't let in? Yeah. Well, according to the gospel, no. Everyone is welcome. Yeah, everyone is welcome in in the family of God. Yeah. Okay, let's go to our next point. We're answering this question: Why did Jesus have to die? Why did he go to the cross? And the fourth answer that, that I want us to unpack is is like the third. Uh, to free us from a little different nuance, the bondage of sin. Uh, here, here's the idea. We've been, we've been forgiven. Our sins have been forgiven. But some of us still feel like we're trapped, like I've, I've got to sin, like I've, I've always done that. Um, you know, like, a, like, uh, like we, have, we have dogs uh, and they, uh, we love them to death. Now we have indoor dogs. Now that we've got older kids, uh, we didn't used to let the dogs in the house, but now we do. Uh, but sometimes, as precious as they are, they do the most vile thing. They go outside and they roll around in unmentionable stuff, right? <laughs> uh, and it's like, why do you do that? But they have to, like they're dogs. Well, the, the point here is that that Jesus frees us from the bondage of sin. In other words, we don't have to go go and roll around in the, the junk that we used to roll around in. Like we, we, we now have freedom. Now, where do we find that freedom? Where do we find that power? Yeah. So I, <clears throat> I mean that, because I think the question that comes from what you just asked, I know you just asked me a question, but 
the question you just asked, or what you're what you're saying is, okay, well, now I'm a Christian, I'm free from this bondage, then why do I continue to still struggle with sin? And so, um, but this power and this, this is is from is from the Holy Spirit. Um, Jesus. Uh, the, uh, oftentimes we think, man, if Jesus were here, like my church would be awesome, like. I would be the perfect Christian. Like everything would be good if Jesus were here. And Jesus, Jesus himself said, like, it's better that I leave. And if I leave, then I'm going to send a helper. And the helper is the Holy Spirit. And so, um, like, we have that power. We have that assurance. We are sealed, right? And so the, the Holy Spirit empowers us to, um, it gives us the power to, to, to refrain from sin. And so, um, but if I'm just sitting here, I'm thinking like, Okay, well, I, I just got to do better today, or if I, I'm just going to be better today. I'm just going to try harder today. Like, it's not going to happen. It may happen for a little while, but it's it's not. You're, you're not going to be able to sustain that. But but the Holy Spirit, Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit. He sends the Holy Spirit to help us. It's so it's kind of weird <coughs> that that I'm a Christian, I'm a Christ follower, and yet I still struggle with sin. Mm-hmm. I struggle to resist sin, and sometimes I give into the temptation to sin. But what, let's make, let's be clear. We're not saying that Jesus died on the cross so that we would be sinless, mm-hmm. are we? Right. No, not yeah. at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you definitely still struggle with sin as believers. It doesn't go away necessarily, um, and, and it won't until we're with Jesus and new heaven, new earth, and everything mm-hmm. is made right. But like Billy was saying, I think just the work of the spirit like Jesus saying it's better that I leave but I'm not leaving you alone I'm leaving you with my spirit to um, to help you um, yeah to, uh, fight and combat that that struggle to, to sin and and um, and remind you of the freedom that you have now to not naturally and just um, thoughtlessly sin like you used to or um, like you said, like you can't almost can't help it because it's just kind of that's how we are all born into this world. We're just born with sin, and um, but now we have uh, the Spirit to help guide us and and convict us and show us, you know, graciously what is right and what is wrong. And there's a very clear, it's it's much more clear. The picture of the Bible is though we used to be <laughs> before we were Christ followers. We used to be like fish on a hook, <laughs> like we just had to sin, like slaves, mm-hmm. bondage. And now when Christ breaks that bondage, it's unnatural at times. It almost feels like you pull a fish out of the water and they don't know what to do. Like, mm-hmm. like they flop around, but, but, but ultimately as new Christians we realize, okay, this is the new reality. I'm not a slave anymore. I don't have to go do that anymore. Mm-hmm. At times I may want to, but I now have the power, the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. not my own willpower, that, right. that never worked. <laughs> right. And it still doesn't work. Willpower doesn't work. But the Holy Spirit's power now enables us to resist temptation, mm-hmm. to say no to sin. We're not, we're no, we're, we're no longer slaves. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the last point. The last point is uh, regarding this question, why did Jesus go to the cross? What's up with, with Jesus dying? The last answer is... Uh, particularly poignant right now at this moment in history. He came to free us from the bondage of death, of death. So many people right now are afraid of dying. Yes. And and the New Testament assures us that as children of God, uh, there's a place for us in heaven. Jesus said while he was still on earth, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. There is a place waiting for us when we die. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this hope in the future. Yes. You know, and I'm, not, I'm not even above this fear. We were out and uh, not out. We were with with uh, with family, and uh, someone coughed on William or close to him. I was like, we got to go home. We're bathing everybody. Like this is <laughs> bad. Like he needs. And so, like I I've, I've had my freak out moments too. But but like Lydia was saying. And, there's, we, we know how this all ends. You know, you read Revelation, it's the multitude and all the nations together, this 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 universal or global church, if you will, this bringing together. And so like, that's what's happening. That's where we're going. So that's, man. Yeah. I think Jesus' um, death and, well, him conquering death and ultimately 
um, looking it in the face and slapping it and saying <laughs> like, there's no, there's no power in that anymore. And, um, and so that really just radically changes our definition of, of death as believers, whereas mm. instead of it being the end of something, mm -hmm. it is actually the beginning of this mm. life that the Lord originally designed for us and has called us to eternally. And so there is much hope in, in the cross and in Jesus' death, because if he did not die, he wouldn't have been able to conquer death, and then we would... Uh, we wouldn't be sharing in that that joy and in that hope for eternity with him. Jesus slapped death in the face, you yes. said. <laughs> yes. He dug you his can heel. Quote me on that. <laughs> he dug his heel right into the head of death and he, he crushed, crushed it. it. He crushed the head of Satan. He Our greatest it. fear, death, greatest has been fear crushed. Has been killed. And that yeah. means that all other fears that we have, getting COVID COVID nineteen mm -hmm. or yeah. um or, or, you know, losing our spouse or whatever your greatest fear is, God has, has crushed it. Amen. He's triumphed over it. Amen. We're going through hard times uh, globally, and uh, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not smart enough, wise enough to even attempt to uh, say what, what God's purpose is in this. I don't think that, that we really as, as preachers and theologians should even try and determine today what the purpose of this is. But we can go to Scripture and say, what, are, what, are, what is God's greater purpose? And, and we can go to Jesus, Jesus' teaching, in which he said this. He said, he said, look, you can take it to the bank. In this world, you will have trouble. As preachers, as Christians, we sometimes lie to, lie to one another, and we say that Jesus doesn't intend for us to go through trouble. He said it. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. And then he goes on, he says, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world, meaning, I mean, I'm, his plan is bigger than this. Uh, as, as, as Lydia said, we have a home in heaven. As, as Elise said, uh, Jesus kicks death in the face, and, and, and now we have a new reality that is beyond. Like, like you said, like, so the, the end is actually the beginning. I was just thinking about that picture, like we, we, we take our first step into heaven, and it, and it was like the end of our life, but then it's like the beginning of our new life for eternity. The bondage of death. Is, is, we've been freed from it by Jesus' work on the cross. 1 Corinthians 5 says that, that Adam, all he ever gave us was death. That in Adam, all died. That's what, that's what happened. When Adam and Eve sinned, the clock started ticking, and now every one of us, we're destined to die. But the passage goes on and says, but in Christ, all shall be made alive. So Jesus turned the page from death unto life. This is a new era, a new day, a new existence that we live in. We are now freed from the bondage of sin. Amen. Yeah. It's been good to be with you guys tonight. It's been good to be in your home. I hope this has blessed you. Maybe giving you just a little taste of, of what the cross is about. Like I want to invite you, uh, maybe, maybe you've never responded to Jesus' invitation. Romans 10 says this, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That's, that's a promise that if you will call on Jesus' name today, he will save you. Uh, maybe, maybe for you today, today is the day of salvation. I invite you to come to Jesus. I invite you tonight, right in, right in the quietness of your own room, Come to Jesus. Make him your savior. Just pray silently right where you are. and Just say, yes, Jesus, I want that. I've never believed this before, but now, now I believe it. I want, I want, I want to be saved. Just, just call on the name of, the, of, of Jesus today and you will be, be saved. Amen. Look, if you, if you need help, if you need any more information, uh, jump online, riverchurchrgv.com and send us an email and we'll... we'll We'll give you information. We'll give you help. We'll welcome you into the, to the, the, the body of Christ, the church. Just reach out, and we'll, we'll definitely respond. Um, Billy, you want to pray for yeah. us? Sure. <clears throat> uh, Jesus, we thank you for the, the cross, Lord. Uh, we thank you for your work on it, Lord. Um, we thank you uh, that it, it paid uh, the debt that we could not pay, Lord. 
Lord, I just I pray over us. I thank you uh, for this opportunity to come together with Randy and Lydia and Elise and just, just be able to talk about this. It's, it's been really refreshing for me, Lord. I pray that it has been um, edifying to those watching, Lord. I, I pray that um, to, the, to the people watching, Lord, I pray that, that they hear the truth, they hear the gospel, they hear that you are here uh, for them, Lord. You, are, you, you came... And, and as in Matthew chapter five, we see that, that or in chapter four and five, we see that <clears throat> you were just, you were here for, for everybody, regardless of their merits, regardless of their standings, regardless of their guilt, of their past, mm-hmm. uh, you were here, uh, you have died for, for them, Lord. Um, Lord, I pray that as Randy said, we, we, we invite them, Lord, to, to just follow, follow you, Jesus. And uh, Lord, I pray, pray over the, the, the people at home. Um, I pray that they, um, they're able to to go through this time uh, that we're in as as a world right now, and, and just uh, just make much of their time. I, I pray that they grow in their relationships uh, with people, Lord. But I, I pray that they grow uh, in their relationship with you, Lord. Uh, we thank you for this time, Lord, and we pray these things in your sweet name. Amen. 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 Hey, it's a good Friday, but but things are going to get better. Um, Sunday's coming. Rest well, my friends.